think that should be it. Other than that, uh, recap of what happened yesterday. Herlock Sholmes got in introduced for case two. And they pulled a Mia Fey on me, so I'm very angry. But hopefully this case is going to be a banger and I'll be hyped. Is that a vent? I think that's some kind of opening for a ventilator. That's, I, if I had to guess, that's how the killer came in. Possibly. Through which fresh air can circulate into the cabin. Isn't that a little odd? What do you mean? How do they miss this? I don't know, man. <laughs> well, this ventilator, if that's what it is, looks like it must connect to the next door cabin. Yes, it would appear to. You're right. But if its purpose is to allow fresh air into the room, surely it would be connected to the outside. Hmm, that's true. Perhaps it's so that the rain and spray don't find their way in when the seas are rough or something like that. They're actually all at a turkey level of reasoning. <laughs> I suppose maybe that's it well I do suppose the vent is one option as to how the killer got in there's fucking Sh Herlock Sholmes as far as I can tell it looks like he might be European he's that he's gone full monkey you noticed the man too have you I have no idea who he is or how he got in here, but he looks suspicious and not tall, surprisingly tall. Naruto-san, don't tell me. Do you really not know who that is? Um, well, no. I don't have any foreign friends or acquaintances at all. Doesn't look like a member of the crew. There's something very unusual about him. And is he investigating the Cosmo desk or is he just playing on it? I mean... What the fuck is Herlock doing? Well, in that case, we simply must talk with him. In case I'm being the killer, nah. Herlock is gonna be our main, uh, I guess, friend assistant in solving these crimes. So no, I don't want him in jail. <laughs> it's nothing on this table at all. The plate and cutlery are all over the floor for some reason. Yes, it's strange. Last night when I went to sleep, I'm sure everything was still. No, wait. What is it? That's funny. I, I can't seem to remember anything about what happened after dinner at all. The food was drugged! The food was tampered with! So, then perhaps you are responsible for what happened to Cosmo. No, 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 no. Sato is bothering me, to be honest. Man, if you, if you played the original games and fucking met, uh, Maya... Uh, Maya, the artist in throughout like the whole original trilogy, I think you'll be more annoyed with her, honestly. Is Maya both dumb and also not trusting? No, tr Maya is very, very trusting. But Maya ain't very smart either. She has the benefit of being a spirit medium so that she can con have some uh, con- I don't know if she's a hippie. I mean, it in the Ace Attorney series, wild shit happens. We've had a dol- we had a whale, I think a dolphin? Whale? I don't know. We've had a bird as a- as a witness, we've had a whale as a witness before. And we've had the dead as witnesses before. So I will- ah, I, I think we can say that this is- this is not a very normal game. <clears throat> Alright, time to talk to fucking Herlock. Greetings, I hope I haven't kept you long. Um, what exactly were you doing in Cosmo's desk just now? Ah, I see. Fascinating. Uh, sorry? What do you see? He feels like he's looking right through me. Ah, yes, everything is clear now. Train of reasoning has run its course. Reductions are have crystallized. You have been in Afghanistan, I perceive. Just recently returned, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Herlock. I thought you were a bit more five-headed than this. 
maybe not. <laughs> Sorry? What? And now, whilst venturing toward foreign climes, you find yourself in the most troubling predicament. Oh, well, that's true at least. But, but how? How the deuce did I know that? Perhaps that was really a most elementary deduction, hardly worth explaining. Have you perhaps managed to do anything else? Oh yes, Afghanistan people, gee. I was talking for the Taliban. <laughs> uh, of course, a great many things is no mystery, my dear madame. For example, you have fled your native land of Russia, being as a merciless revolutionary. You have 16 victims of assassination in your wake and now travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower. And when the ribbon, occupant of this very cabin, discovered your identity, you ended his life too. Yes, I believe that summarizes the past beautifully. I'm going to hide the truth now. I'm not going to deceive these eyes. Okay, yesterday I said Herlock was five steps ahead. I was wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's true. It was you who did this to Cosmo. <laughs> what? And you're pulling a revolution too. <laughs> it's shameful behavior, Naruto-san. Absolutely, wi absolutely wicked. No, listen. There's no way. We got fucking thrown again. Come on. Now explain yourself. Tell me everything. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Just say that we're Japanese! <laughs> How could you do it? For pity's sake, open your eyes. I'm not a Rus Russian revolutionary, obviously. Oh, forgive me. And as for you, what kind of reduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came into your head. The victim was Russian? Wait, never mind. He's fucking dumb. He doesn't know the cosmos fucking Japanese. Never mind. Hold on, Sean. What made you think the victim was Russian? Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. Well, what the fuck that is? That is a Russian word for wardrobe. Hmm, so someone pinned the crime on us. Wait, how did someone know? <gasps> I was right. Someone drugged us, put us in the cabin to frame us, killed Kazuma, Wrote this dying message to lead us into the cabin, pitting us for the crime. It's all come together. In their final moments, many find their native tongue filling their head. For this young man, Russian. Kaza was Russian, was he? Yes, people G. Initially, I considered Gardrobe, maybe the name of the killer. A certain Robert Gard, perhaps. But in the interest of the thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe there at least. Where you find Mr. Naruto sleeping soundly. Quite so, I found you. The renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I'm Russian too? <laughs> I observed that you are wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you are acquainted. And if, I'm, if my memory serves, the outfit is the additional dress of the Russian people. Ah, yes! Russian. Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people? I had no idea. <laughs> and I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. <laughs> I take a photograph of the victim, the message that I might analyze it for possible hidden details. <laughs> Sato in the mouth. <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't hurt just glanced at the article. Maybe there might be a picture or two. Wait. Cash your eye over it sometimes if, it inter if it, the interest takes you. You may need someone to interpret. It's all written in Russian. Why would we need an interpreter if we were Russian, Holmes? I feel like Holmes is onto something, but Sholmes is uh, he's thinking 
five steps ahead, but then te takes ten steps back. It's like he he feels like we're not Russian, but he says we're Russian. I don't get it. <clears throat> no, look over there. Crewman, do you mean? He wasn't there before, was he? That's what I thought. Why don't we try talking to him? Probably because I'm likely to get yelled at again, but I suppose I could try. Is that... Something wrong, Naruto-san? Oh, no. It's just that crewman staying by the door. I can't help feel like I've seen him somewhere before. He is the one that drugged us. He is the one that fucking drugged us. Oh, actually, it is probably H Hosanaga. Wait, you're right. <laughs> oh, yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. That's what can I do for you? It's fucking Hosanaga. <laughs> See, I'm five head. I recognize that face, but it can't be. Yep, it's him. I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosonaga. <clears throat> so Hosonaga is playing the part of Gumshoe in this game, I see. He's dying? I, I mean, I tell, I'm telling you, he has COVID. <laughs> what are you doing here? I think that should be my life. I was stunned when I saw you. My heart stopped. It nearly stopped, I hope. I have seen some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew. Why does he have special orders conveniently wherever we are? Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I can do to help you, please ask. Never expected to see this man on the board. He's stalking us, Monka W. Perhaps his presence can help me out of this hopeless situation. <clears throat> so what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I'm so sorry. Hmm? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. Huh? For what? My orders were to act as Asogi-san's bodyguard. That's a yikes, bro. You failed your mission. It was Minister of Justice Jigoku who pushed for his overseas study toward Go Ahead. And he trusted me with ensuring that Sogi san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Was someone trying to assassinate him? How could that even be a possibility? Was was there a bigger meaning for why Asogi or Kazuna had to travel? Was that his mission? Was it was his mission gonna get interviewed by some assassin? <clears throat> um, excuse me, but can I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer? That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you. But could I perhaps ask you something? You? Your little, your little third class lady's maid? Wow! Wow! Capital D colon! My mother gave me a name. I am senior crew member Biff Storgano Storganov. This thing is just avoid eye contact, I think. First class cabin area. Uh, Mr. Storganov, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in the finest part of Burial Steamship for very important persons. Sort of very important persons. Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. 
is why I'm always recording this place. Gosh, that's amazing. I sent out that stupid stowaway inside. I want, to, I want to pick you up and throw you in the ocean, but Stroganov is not an animal. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Sogis currently occupied? Da. Mm, Sasa san, do you understand that? Sound like da. I think it's probably Russian for yes or no. Genius. He is not permit. Beast Stroganov, their naming sense is terribly. It's actually terrible. <laughs> oh yeah! I forgot that this this series, not just this game, has a terrible naming system when naming off uh, foreigners. Uh, in the most recent mainline game for Ace Attorney, they had to create a whole like fictional foreign country. I think it's like based off of, of like India or uh, some somewhere in like somewhere in Middle East or something I think and they had to make a, a foreign country for it and every character's name is some kind of fucking pun <clears throat> Mr. Roa is an authentic western gentleman as a, such a man would have no interest in the lowest story from insignificant far east islands why does everybody in this game have a fucking boner for hating on Japan Wow. Now it's harsh. Maybe whoever is in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. <clears throat> no answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one there to help out with inquiries. How annoying. Ah! Uh, uh oh. What was that? It came from inside the cabin. It's a high pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside. I'm about to break down the door. Oh, Sholmes. I shan't be stopped. When the when the fit is on me, I, re I revel in kicking the doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this mus muscular urge? What prey can, can I kick? <laughs> I think we should just go in. There's no time to think about the stress relief. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such a th such things? We should say. Very well then. I shall eluc elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of a logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Quick play, let's work through my deductions together. <clears throat> oh. So, the dude is looking Russian, Mr. Royal, and obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand? Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you spore. Now moving on. The question then begged is this. What would you desire to get rid of, of this magnificent beard, Mr. Wally? Once again, the answer is plain. You have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. <clears throat> Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular, the fascinating front page article. What you would have here, you have also read, Mr. Rowlett. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about revolutionary. Translation, the headline says, Revolutionary Villain Bolshevik Please, Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of this article possesses an extremely copious beard. I know the article about yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. 
You are the future Russian revolutionary himself, Vilden Borshevik. Well, I've heard of you myself, you understand. Wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion, you are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. The proof of this crime over there. Ah, yes, Mr. Rollett. Taken, unaware, un taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. And I assure you that I speak so much more eloquently and honestly than in the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. Proof of your crimes sit before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be open and contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, you ask? By my estimation, a young lady, perhaps. One slight enough, or slight enough to fit therein. Don't be absurd. <clears throat> and what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. We are not well suited to you. We are not well suited to a life of crime. We, we you care, your careless cool duel betrays you. What? Once again, we need to only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. That's the reason you refuse to open your traveling case. You can, it can be found in the paper of the newspaper. But there is another most stimulating article. If you turn from the thing revolutionary to the back page. Now, Prana Ballerina of the Novich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. This has a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. <coughs> Your crime is that, is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nic Nicolina Pov Pavlova. <clears throat> Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Alamensky. <laughs> Sato-san, that wasn't one of the, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing about, was it? Well, uh, the stories are full of Mr. Sholmes' brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. It's just one or two keys in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps technically switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Switch some keywords in his deductions? Yes, <clears throat> but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that. We unlock the true genius of Mr. Shom's great deductions. Precisely the thought that was going through my mind. This man's a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. Truly, you're quite eccentric, Sholmes. It's not that funny. Ah, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? When did the fucking cuffs come off? Fucking Sholmes is Houdini. He's not a detective, he's a magician. I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. <clears throat> I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present... His logic and reasoning spectacular. That's quite the name, I suppose. Course correction. <clears throat> it's 
So the dubious looking Russian and Mr. Royal that obviously what catches the eye in the first place. Is an enormous pair of shears in his hand. That part's true. Now we ask ourselves, what could we possibly want with such an what with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. We are on the verge of using that shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. <coughs> hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'd ever worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Rolla either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word here, Naruto san, and see if that helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Royal. It. Wonder if it's really his beard that we, he intended to use those shears on. And exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Shom's deduction better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruto san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in the last sentence. Why exactly was Mr. Roy really going to use those enormous shears for? Here, right? Yes! Okay, this is part of the trailer, so it should be easy. <coughs> wow. You know, Suki has put up the act too. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden lock shoe support. Indeed. You have identified the precise detail I was intended to expose. Sure about that, Sholmes? <laughs> Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman, and judging from the length of the sh and sheen of your hair, one still very much in your her youth. If only I had managed to cut off my hair. No one would have suspected. The question then begged is, why would you decide to get rid of yourself with this magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. You have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. <coughs> I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is an article about the revolutionary. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that, that old man was a really young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Naruto-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? I feel like you're in, you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts with Mr. Shones. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm, I'm not having fun or anything. Sure, sure buddy. This is strictly business, not strictly co- Yes, yes, I don't understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part with of Mr. Shom's deduction, shall we? The evidence that he picked out doesn't fit the facts at all. Now that's true, given that Mr. Roy is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be a merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. <clears throat> let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needs to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Although, I, I'll do my best. Alright. Hmm, this is interesting. Are you fascinating and relevant, Naruto-san? Well, no, I i mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I, I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I, but look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I, I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Ah, I'm glad you've noticed the article. <clears throat> ah! Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. He pops up everywhere, this Mr. Shomes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novich, Novovich uh, Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reportedly missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. 
I still can't read that. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? True. It would appear the woman was in costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing that diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Shit, brother. Oh, how much? 20,000 20, rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure <clears throat> it must be an unbelievable sum of, mo of money. Sato's son's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. Tiara is property of the Novovich Ballet. It would seem the director is beside herself with worry. <coughs> yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlo Pavlova and the fabul valuable Tiara. They requested international assistance at all ports with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? <coughs> it does seem to be the Russian thing to do. <coughs> I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Naruto. Can you present this now? Yes! <coughs> the evidence that reveals your true is the enforced article about the ballerina. And that's right, you've hit the hit nail on the head. Renowned prime ballerina of Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Yes, we've already seen this, we this. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of Novovich Ballet prime ballerina. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Oh shit, drop the fucking scissors right on her. Monka. That's fucking dangerous. <clears throat> You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. <clears throat> a ballerina on the run. She has a pet, doesn't she? Because earlier, remember one of the rules saying that you cannot bring a pet along. <clears throat> you are at this very moment on the makeup of committing the most grievous crime. Proof of the crime over there. Oh yes, Miss Pavlo Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have propensity to let their eyes astray, you see. And I assure you, I speak more so much eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes, yes, the traveling case. <clears throat> is it not the traveling case? This woman is a ballerina, she is right in front of our eyes. She's so clear she can't be inside the traveling case as well. Uh, that's right. Seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. She seemed to look pleased, Naruto-san. Is that the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Uh... Can we see? Here we see. What is this? That's not it. Try this again. Is it the ti tiara then? Is it 
I guess it's the tiara then. Is she trying to smuggle the tiara away, away given how precious it is? Hmm. It's probably theft then, I suppose. Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. It doesn't look familiar. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yes! Prove your crime? They show you this tiara. I believe this tiara is worn on the stage by dancers in the Novovici Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in the newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Yes, you left your ballet trope, unlawfully taking the precious tiara with you. There we go. <clears throat> have no one, no family, no friends, I'm all alone, and I need money. <coughs> but I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an earl or a Persia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's run away all by herself. She must be extremely lonely. <coughs> Alright, I'll tell you everything. There's no point to hiding in it now. Come, come, let's not be too hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What do you mean? You have stoutly refused to open the traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish for it to be remain closed. Is that not so, Miss? Pavlova, um, my dear girl, there is no sense in playing games with me. Nothing else gets my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. <coughs> dear me, we are not well suited to life crime, are we? Your careless could uh, betray you. Once again, we only follow your furtive glance to follow the answer. <coughs> He's completely changed tack with the deduction now. Mr. Shone's adapted his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe why was he suddenly brought this bookshelf, bookshelf into this? <coughs> Just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case has uh, been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true. But still. Miss Pavlova certainly did cast eyes in that direction, I noticed it myself. And there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. There's somewhere in the same area that's where her case was involuntarily drawn. <coughs> Maybe that's the her answer. Whatever she was sent inside the case, she revealed a final gaze in the direction of the bookcase. It's the statue, isn't it? No. Oh no, it's the, the rules. Because she, yeah, she, she probably has a pet in there. <laughs> yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are sh also strictly forbidden. <coughs> is that inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on the vessel? That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. No weapon or other dangerous item would move of their own accord. <coughs> Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case?
is the last item listed as we've been in the vessel's rules of passage, a pet. <coughs> Induction complete. Elementary, my dear. Shones, what the fuck are you doing in here? Mr. Sholmes? <coughs> Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one side. Have I not told you that as a detective, it is my business to know what other people do not. This isn't a tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no, no. Well, why are you hanging from that hook for you? <coughs> isn't it obvious? Probably assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally. Which to determine if it would bend the conceited looking hook in the wall so full of brag and bounce. Uh, I never know whether it makes this man seriously or not. Ah, uh, you again, the great detective. Ah, uh, Inspector. I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you, most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than the hook on the wall next time. What is the report? Speak. <coughs> Measure report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night, here on this vessel, the Ste Steamship Bureau, has been solved by me, naturally. <coughs> yes, I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. <coughs> so that means to eliminate all your minds. But I'm about to review my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. <coughs> ah, you have solved it? Even Hedgehog understands this case. We all know who was responsible for the killings, killing Stupoy this morning when we found a criminal in wardrobe. It is this stolen? And he was handcuffed, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it. <coughs> Trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because as everyone knows, the cabin drawer was bolted shut from inside. <coughs> that means the culprit must have someone who was inside the cabin. Yes, it's what called a locked room switch mystery. And that's where the emergency alarm comes in. <coughs> Locked broom, that is point. <coughs> There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside there. Yeah, quite mistaken, the cabin next door <coughs> is not a so called locked room at all. See? Sholmes gets it. Oh, yes, there's another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? Don't tell me saying the fucking vents. Why escape open weapon as we speak? The ventilator, man. You think this is funny? I can't even put my arm through the hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. Is that the culprit or entered and left the cab victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible. Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words of Cosmo written in his diary? <coughs> Precisely, my dear madame. What does it mean? Oh, it's a speckled band. Is it the fucking tiara? It's in this very cabin. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? There's a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. What I'm about to expose for you all to see will shock you to your cores. Behold! Ah, uh, it was a snake. I'm going to introduce you all 
to the band. A speckled band. A snake? Indubitably. Alright, Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. Pray, what troubles you? Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? Looks more stripy, wouldn't you say? Hmm? He's poisonous, isn't it? Harlock Sholmes is trying to present. Is this another deduction? Logic and reasonable spectacular. Okay. It's time. Great deduction. Well, what moments ago you claimed the following? This dead has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has all this whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall these horrid events, your your aching heart smarts with pain. It is very pain that evidence evidences your inexcusable link to the victim's death. So we ask. What is the nature of this intruder that stole the victim's cabin in portentous night? Well, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded the vessel with, was it not? Ah, as is expected. Another telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is this writhing serpent we see before us. It's not? Fact leaves us. It's an written observation on the light night, speckled cat and rats. Incredibly. The next specimen marking do not fit the structure in any way. What explanation can you even give? Prey? Or was the light that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? Oh, look at me. No, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary hidden behind your back. As a subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours shed its original skin. No? Aside through the ventilator visible in the cabin, your then speckled friend stood next door. He's in the book on the other side of the bridge. The serpent silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light appeared to be a young gentleman who was about to lose his life as, as a speckled band. <clears throat> the summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night upgraded the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake. This mark can change each time it roughs its lost its skin. A snake so dreadful, you can only imagine it would be found deep in parts, deep in steps of India. Hmm. I'm sure so he died. Moving on, we came to the heart of the matter. I could never demise another victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? According to the data which I have been appraised, it would appear that there's no visible signs of injury. That's true. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the terrible venom. Uh, the autopsy says otherwise. Now we take to that as fact. We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm we have seen the crime. I don't know, could there be? Yes, an examination of the deceased body will prove the cause of death conclusively. Nope. Almost, but not quite, impressible puncture wounds by the venom's fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the nick snake bite by, by the terrifying friend. See no sense. There's no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. Now the incident, you endeavor, you endeavor to hide everything you didn't. Now your involuntary glances portray the hiding place you chose. 
That's right, you hear the evidence that links to the victim's death to the trapping case. First man in the cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your shipping was your shipping assassin was relentless inside no doubt. You, you don't. It's sound of the victim may know of the low whistling sound that he heard most before his end. Now was your signal, was it not? Sound you used to train your shipping friend. Train? Indeed, you put the saber through his ventilator and wait. At the period, you summon it back with your whistle. You couldn't know the animal had done a duty, done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. Your victim appeared not to have been dispatched. You release the snake once more. You deny the snake has undergone such training? It's not true. Having slid through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in one at once. And his venom coursed through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled man that took the poor man's young life. There can be no doubt, my logic is infallible. Well, I know that part's not true, given the autopsy. Now this concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the speckled ban. Trainer pressing as a killing machine it is on. Near on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. Promise of food is the key to training or any creature. <sighs> Mason, your great deduction really lives up to its name. I see why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name. My dear man, it was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done it with one left hand. Um, do I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course, what's on your mind? It's just about your deductions before. Something's quite not don't quite make sense to me. I have questions to my as to my method. You answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all. Snakes are egg laying creatures, part of the reptile family. And well informed, madame. And reptiles, um, don't drink milk. It's really only anim mammals who like that like to drink milk, you see. So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter. I would doubt Miss Bavala used some kind of treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic holds. Well, there's something else. Snakes have no ears. Yes, so I'm not sure it would be really possible to signal a snake by whistling. Oh, well, madame, what are the tales? What of the tales from Arabia? Heard a snake that dances to the sounds of flute? I think perhaps the performance plays their music in the in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. These creatures are so inept to be to be practically useless. Don't take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um, there's one other thing. You have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to repel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell core like the ones in this cabin. Then it should be tr then it should try harder. <laughs> Please don't be angry with me, Mr. Sholmes. The point is... Even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say is that there is a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had part in this. Sad Sholmes. I think 
We need to step in and hold, help again, Mr. Naruto. Oh no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Mr. Shonen's latest seductions and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. I had a feeling this was coming. Alright, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for. Mr. Naruto. Yes, right. So, catch your eyes down to your wrist again. What? Mr. Houdini, back at it again. You've done it again! Handcuffs are gone. Where'd they go? Fear not. I shall see that you're there straight after our work to done here. I really wish you'd just leave them off. Now, everyone, let us begin. Forlock Shulman is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. <clears throat> Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Okay, have I read all this? Uh, take, give, give a break to my voice. Your aching heart smarts with pain. She does have a pain expression on her face. Yes, that's true. She looks as though Cosmo's death is weighing heavily on her mind. But you're not, sh not sure... Mr. Sholmes has quite has read her quite credibly, is that it? Could there be some other way to interpret her expression then? Let's take a moment. I really look closely at Mr. Lola. Oh, there it is. Yes, when you recall these horrid events, a black claw stretch smarts with pain. Indeed, and the civil observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss so, Paola, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? It's a cat, isn't it? She has a cat. When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And I am sad. The pain from this wound is worse. It is very pain that evidences your inscrutable link to the victim's death. So when we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on the pretentious night? Well, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded the vessel with, was it not? And as suspected, another telltale glance. Now, now, your friend, this withering serpent we see before us. Seems like a scratch mark on the back of Mr. Pavlova's hand was made by this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except, snakes don't have claws, do they? No, they don't. They don't even have hands or feet, or which claws might grow. Well then, if that snake isn't her pet, what is? What's the true identity of this friend of hers? We should follow her gaze, Naruto san. That's where we'll find the answer. Yes! Oh, did not mean to. Okay, well, that was, I meant to turn, I did not mean to present there. Got it, got it, got it. Boy, isn't there a way for me to turn on fast tech speed? God. Oh, 
Okay, I guess the frame the frame has the picture of her cat, but I guess. Okay, let's see here. I guess I can investigate it, right? Yeah? Is she ran away? She's exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true. But personally, it's the little black creature she's holding that's caught my eye. Let me take a closer look at this. Doubt your friend is the little kitten you see for us. Yes, the scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Oh no. The of this black kitten isn't clear. But what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Darka is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. That would appear to be a Russian blur, blue. And yet, the cat le leaves us in a quandary. It is writing observation on the night in question, tell us speckled man. Whereas, regrettably, the specimen's markings do not fit the description in any way. In that explanation, can we. We then give prey. What was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? I don't think it has nothing to do with me. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this card right even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you were trying to, but failing to conceal, snake slows skin. You see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. She just left it in her pocket, no one would have ever known. Ah, yes, boys like this, like that, are his strong specialty. He's ever, he's ever so clearly forced her to do something. The adduction was his specialty, or maybe making me believe that was a ploy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pavlova's hidden, hiding behind her back? Seems to be soft and fluffy. A piece of fur of some sort. It looks like a handle. I think it may be a cat's toy. It's sort of common glass apparently. That toy for cats. Cats have to chase them. Band around and pod. Kids in particular love that sort of play. Only to wave it in front of them and they pounce to catch it. Yeah, that sounds positively adorable. True. Yes, the thing you were trying to, but fitting to conceal, is, um, a cat's toy. Precisely, the true nature of the now infamous speckled band. And it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You waved around, I presume? Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice. But why? For what reason? My dear boy, there can only be one reason to that. After a few line friend disappeared through the vents there into the neighboring cabin, Miss Pavola intended to use a speckled cat toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Pavova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a 
There's some Russian blue breed of cat by the name of Darko. A truly troublesome feline, young Tarka is proven to be. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Wawaba. It was after I gave her food last night. That's when it happened. She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she had disappeared. Through the ventilator. Darka, she's so naughty. Is was the milk drugged too? Was everything fucking drugged? Who who decided to drug it? Was it the cook? Was it some unknown third party we don't know yet? Moving on, we can we come to the heart of the matter, grim demise of the victim. As you manage his life, and why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it appear there is no visible signs of injury. So she knows about this. What could the injury possibly be? A catch? I can't actually leave markings. Some says it's true. There's no signs of wounds anywhere on the Kaizo's body. That's right. Mr. Shom seems to be unaware of one very important detail. Kaizo oh, wasn't poisoned. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him the information he's missing out. Yes! <clears throat> In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the postmortem core. Ah yes, I knew it was one or the other. This neck was? Indeed, the breaking of the heavy vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. See, my struggle isn't some immortal freak, you know. Injury is- the jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, we take that as a fact. We can reasonably Im imagine that there remains evidence that film seemed the crime. I know, could there be? Yes, an examination of the deceased split body. The cause of the death, cause of death. Who's cause of death caused by, because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck by someone. Or someone. Yes, that's a distant possibility. As of yet, no weapon has been found though. Presumably, Darko didn't silently creep up behind Cosmo and deal a fatal blow. <clears throat> I suppose it's possible that we had a fall and hit the ground awkwardly. A terrible act of misfortune that broke his neck completely by accident. Ah, uh, yes, a bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe the Cosmo though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm. Well, we need to fix this direction somehow. Is there anything from the scene that could explain what happened? The shoe polish, no? Yes! <clears throat> yes, an examination of the mark on the floor proved the cause of the death conclusively. It's a particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body is a deposit of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed. Probably identified by a little analysis device I constructed, which I carry now as a matter, of course. Beeswax, beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results. An undeniable ingredient of shoe polish. The color of polish is the perfect match of the color of Mr. Sogi's lace leather shoes. <coughs> but at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Sogi must have caught his foot at the point on the floor and tripped. And my dreadful turn of misfortune caught his neck against some immovable object as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instant, he lost his life. Is that really true, Miss Pablova? What about the evidence left at the scene? Where Mr. Sogi lost his life. 
Yes, the facts are as clear as day to me. You did all that you could see the incriminating evidence. Now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right, you hit evidence that links to your victim's death in the travel case. I... I don't believe it. Cosmo merely tripped over and... Now he's no more? It can't be true. I refuse to accept it. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that what's happened. But... And that's... And, and if this particular part of Mr. Shomo's deduction is right, Ms. Mavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. There's in this cabin... Somewhere in the direction... That she just cast her eyes. Where? I wonder. Let's have a good look around. I guess might just be somewhere. This is a waste paper basket, perhaps all the first class cabins have this, but you know, I only started out this cabin late last night. Surely there's not much rubbish in there yet. Oh? What's this? How do we not know this is the first time? It's a rugby piece of glass, isn't it? Yes, it is. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Looks like familiar. Perhaps it's more than your mind is simply playing tricks on you. Yes! That's right. You hit the evidence that links to you to the victim's death in the waste paper basket. Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object. It was seen. One that has familiar air to it. In fact. Precisely, we found another piece of broken glass on the floor in Mr. Soga's cabin. As you can see, the two pieces fit perfectly. Ooh, it's the bell. So, Miss Pablova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that part of this glass object, which was inevitably broken at the scene of the victim's death, should be found in the wastepaper basket in your cabin? Okay with glass bell, are you not? I don't know. And that hushed Russian accent of yours won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? Because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Narodo. Um, yes. Then it's like Miss Award to the little glass bell. That would be a picture frame. Look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from dark darkest color, the very glass bell in question. Truth has caught up with you, Miss Halova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. The cause of that fateful stum stumble? Your absent feline friend, Darka. I couldn't... I couldn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. Deduction complete. Why don't you tell us now, Miss Pavola? Tell us exactly what happened last night. And if you were losing your footing yourself, would you name as the victim of what has one of your hands? Yeah, why are his hands in a fist? That's what I thought originally, so I guess it is his fists. If he really fell due to an unfortunate accident, then his fist this just doesn't seem quite right. The exact same thought occurred to me. In the fall, one's instinct is to open the palms flat. 
And yet, here we see the victim with his left hand tightly balled into a fist. Almost, you might say. As though he were gripping something. What do you mean? Seeing that I took the liberty of uh, investigating the victim's fist a short while ago. You did? And what, pray, do you imagine I found there? My dear fellow. Mr. Sholmes, show us, please. Uh, of course, my dear madam. Why I keep you in suspense? This is what I found. A crescent moon with a little gemstone in the middle. Yes, you're right. A crescent moon. It's very pretty, but what does it tell us? It tells us nothing. I'm not so sure. The crescent moon looks... familiar somehow. I'm sure I've seen this somewhere before. <clears throat> Observation, Mr. Narahodo. That is the key. What? The truth is now tantalizingly close. How did the crescent moon come to be in Cosmos' clenched fist? It's the final clue, the last piece of the puzzle. Ask yourself, what does this little crescent moon mean? What significance has it? Observe. Find the answer with your own eyes. <clears throat> ah, her earring. Yes! There's Pavlova on your ear there. I see you have a crescent moon as well. Other ear. There seems to be a crescent moon missing. A little link holding it must have been broken, I suppose. <clears throat> and the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clenched fist. Clearly, there's only one logical conclusion. Would you agree, Mr. Narahodo? Yes. Miss Pablo, Mr. Sogi must have grasped that crescent moon and pulled it from your ear. Perhaps just long before he fell on the floor. In other words, last night in Mr. Sogu's cabin, you witnessed the moment when the victim fell on his with his with your own eyes. In fact, you were quite literally at arm's length from him. <clears throat> I mean, the question is, why did Mr. Sogu do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in his clenched fist during his final moments? No one can protect you now. Please, Miss Pavlova, tell us the truth. Last night. What did you do to the Cosmo? When I think about it, everything that happened yesterday, it was too much. Running away, fishing boat in the middle of the night, trying to climb onto this huge ship, and then when I was in at the cat when I was at last in this cabin and could relax after this horrible long day. <clears throat> Darker, wait. I couldn't believe it when she disappeared through the ventilator. I tried to call her with a little whistle. And I tried waving her favorite toy. Nothing worked. Darker would not come back. <clears throat> what are you doing this at this time of night, Inspector? Oh. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. Young man from your country, he was very polite and kind. He helped me to find Darko, and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again, and I was going to leave the man's cabin. Just a moment, sorry, but... Oh yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. 
Ah, of course. You're Nikolina Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina. I heart, my heart nearly stopped when he said that. He knew who I was. He, how could this man from a land for far away is known a Russian ballerina? Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. But what are you doing on the ship? I'm sure I read that in your ballet company was performing in Shanghai at the moment. I can't fool him. I have to tell him the truth and hope he doesn't tell anyone. I have no other choice. Hmm, I see. So you've run away. Please keep my secret. Don't tell anyone. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. He's going to pull the cord. He's going to tell the captain. Why did I, why did I think I could trust him? And then it happened. Everything at once. It was only a second, but it felt like forever. I could jump out of my arms and down to the young man's feet. And... As he turned around to look at me... I pushed him. I don't even know why. I don't know why I did. I was so scared. And... I had to stop him from telling anyone about me. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Narohodo, the day's work is not done yet, it seems. There's one more deduction to make. What? Another deduction? Yes. What action was the victim really about to take at the moment? First, consider the victim's location within his cabin. That's easy. I used the memory of every detail of that room. I mean, yes, I spent quite a lot of time in the wardrobe. But still, the cabin has been in my home for this entire voyage. So this is how the cabin looked last night. Miss Pavlova visited Cosma? Yes, it's exactly how it was. Aren't you ready then, Mr. Narahodo? Yes. If there's one thing I've learned today, is that a simple gaze can reveal all manner of truths. Not only that, in order to draw the right conclusion, I can't afford to be out be out by even a little bit when you're following the gaze to where it lands. So, when you turn away from Miss Pavlova, what exactly was Cosmo looking at? Take that! Considering everything that had happened last night, certainly it may have looked as though Cosmo was going to ring the bell cord. Yes, however. What is directly beside the bell cord? The wardrobe. The wardrobe? And more importantly, what was inside the wardrobe? The man's great friend, sleeping soundly. Miss Pavlova, please think back very carefully. Or Mr. Sobey's exact words last night. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. Another opinion? Yes, but not from a member of the crew. No, Mr. Sobey intended to consult his close friend on the matter. See if between them, he might be able to help you in some way, no doubt. Sadly, you can't know the truth for certain. It's too late for that. I wish you had made sure of what Mr. Sobey was looking at. Things may have ended very differently if you had. Wow, oh, this is a lot more sad than I thought it would be. Miss Pavlova? <clears throat> I want to thank you for finally admitting the truth. But unfortunately, the truth is, a man lost his life because of what you did. And what will and that will never change. I hope you'll never forget that. I'm sorry. Really. I'm so so sorry. What have I done? It's 
so at long last. I managed to shroud the trace accident on the SS Bureau. I was finally laid to rest. <laughs>